Hello and welcome to part two of this video on resistors and series by Adrian Daly from Pure Electrical Training. In the first part of this video, I showed you why you need to understand resistors and series and how it ties into your working world on site as an electrician, as well as how to identify test method one and test method two so that you stand a better chance of remembering this knowledge for your exams. In this video, we will now learn how to calculate resistors and series in preparation for those exams. By the end of this lesson, you must know that resistances in a series circuit add up to equal to resistance total, or RT. For example, R1 plus R2 plus R3 equals resistance total. You should know that the current flowing in a series circuit is constant, and as such, I will refer to that as the current total, or IT for short, and we use that as a constant reference point to calculate voltage drops across the individual resistances. Some of you could know that all the voltages in a series circuit add up to equal to voltage total, or VT for short, and that proves Kirchhoff's second law, which states that the algebraic sum of potential drops in a closed circuit is zero. Essentially, if you subtract each individual voltage drop away from the voltage total, then you would get zero. Equally, if you add all the individual voltage drops up, you would get the voltage total. It's one and the same. These then can become our rules for series circuits, and I suggest that you write this down on your formula sheet as it will make a huge difference in the exams. Resistors in series are calculated using addition and subtraction. Current is constant throughout the circuit and is the key to unlocking the missing values. And voltage drops within a series circuit add up to equal the VT. In this example, you will see that we have four resistors in series, and in a series circuit, these are simply added together. 3 ohms plus 5 ohms plus 7 ohms plus 9 ohms equals 24 ohms. What I want you to get used to doing is pulling all the information out of the questions that you are given in the exams, as most of the wording is just telling a story. All you really need is the map. And by writing VT equals, RT equals and IT equals like I've done on the left, you can now easily identify the values that you have and the ones that you are looking for and we find those using the Ohm's law triangle. In this example, we have a voltage total of 50 volts. We can now see that we need either the RT or the IT, and since we only have the individual resistance values, we are going to have to calculate our resistance total to find our current total. If we add those resistances up, we get an RT of 18 ohms. If you look closely at the Ohm's law triangle that we are using in this example, you will notice that the subscript shows that if we are using voltage total, Vt, with resistance total, Rt, this means we are calculating current total, which is It. 50 volts divided by 18 ohms gives us a current total of 2.78 amps. We can now put that value here, and now we have all the total values for the circuit. If you haven't done it already, I want you to write down on your formula sheet that current in a series circuit remains constant, as this is very important to you being able to answer any voltage drop question on series circuits during the electrical theory exam. Imagine that electrons travelling in a circuit are like cars on a road. Because there are no branches, junctions or other routes to take, their only choice is to stay on this road as shown in this animation. If you look closely at the Ohm's law triangle we were using in the last example, you will notice that the subscript shows that we were using voltage total and resistance total to calculate current total. This is important to remember because now we will be using current total as that does not change within the series circuit and multiplying that with resistance one to calculate voltage one. If we used resistance two, then we would be calculating voltage two and so on and so forth. This means that once we have the current total, the IT, we can then use that to apply Ohm's law to each individual resistance and calculate the voltage drop across that resistance. For example, to calculate V1 across resistance 1, we use the Ohm's law triangle, but this time we use our current total as the constant. So let's move the IT to our Ohm's law triangle. Current total of 2.78 amps times the free ohm resistance equals a voltage drop of 8.34 volts. This means that the voltage drop across R1 is 8.34 volt. We can then do the same for resistance 2 by transferring that value across to our Ohm's law triangle, which gives us a voltage drop of 16.68 volts across resistance 2, and then finally resistance 3. 
and our final voltage drop of 25.02 volt. Now that we have all of our voltage drops, we can add them all up and check that they are equal to the voltage total or VT, which in this example is 50 volts. Our calculated total comes to 50.04 volts, which is perfectly acceptable and is due to rounding up or rounding down of the IT or voltage drops through each resistor. In the multiple choice exams, they won't try to catch you out with decimal points. The wrong answers should be obvious and are usually values that have been calculated incorrectly, so make sure that you check your answers. In written exams, as long as you've shown all your calculations and workings to prove the final value, the answer will be correct. Finally, adding all those voltage drops proves Kirchhoff's second law, which states that the sum of potential drops, and we refer to voltage as potential difference in a closed circuit, is zero. If you consider that for a moment, when you've tested either side of an appliance or an electrical equipment, you should have zero volts on the neutral side. The next time you're at work and test voltage between line and neutral and a pendant, for example, you should have mains voltage on the line conductor going into the lamp and zero voltage on the neutral coming out. In my next video, we are going to answer the following example, where we don't have the voltage or the current total, but we do have a voltage drop over resistor 3. So I want you to contemplate what you are going to do. Why don't you have a go at this example, and then in the next video, we can go through it together and you can check your method and calculations. Finally, let's remind ourselves of the lesson objectives. You must know that resistances in a series circuit add up to equal the resistance total, or RT, for example, R1 plus R2 plus R3 equals resistance total. You should know that the current flowing in a series circuit is constant, and as such, I will refer to that as the current total, or IT, and we use that as a constant reference point to calculate voltage drops across the individual resistances. Some of you could know that all the voltages in a series circuit add up to equal the voltage total, or VT, and that proves Kirchhoff's second law. Well, that's it for part two of this video, and in part three, we'll go through the last example where we only have a voltage drop over one resistor. In the meantime, don't forget that these videos can count towards your off-the-job training for your apprenticeship or just for your own CPD. And please ensure that you like, share and subscribe so that everyone can benefit from this content. Thank you and take care.